So today I'm going to show you another cool thing that you can do with VFX Graph and with Shader Graph. And it's some pretty cool weapon effects. Combining the power of these two packages is awesome and you can get some very interesting results. I played around with this idea, made a few variations as you can see, and this is the one I'm going to show you how to create. The others are exclusively available on my Patreon page and there's a link in the description in case you are interested. Alright, so let's see how we can do this. So first I got this sword from this package in the Unity Asset Store, great content by the way. Then in a universal render pipeline project in Unity 2019.3.10, the first thing we need to do is go to the package manager and install the VFX graph and shader graph as well. Then you need to make sure you go to preference and down here in visual effects you need to turn on experimental operators slash blocks so you can use trigger events. Ok, so as you can see I have a special shader for the sort to create this cool mesh effect. And then I got a few particles made with VFX graph. And I'm going to start with the shader first and show you a simplified version so you can have a starting point as well. But in a few moments I will show you the VFX graph particles. So for the shader we need to start with a PBR graph. And once you open it up, you can go ahead and change the main preview to a custom mesh and select your weapon of preference. I'm gonna pick the sword from the asset I have downloaded. Then we are going to need a few properties, like a color which we can set to HDR mode and to white. Then we need a texture 2D for our main texture, in my case it's going to be the texture that came with the sword. We can drag these two to around here and multiply them just like this. And this is going to be for the albedo. Then we are going to need a vector 1 which we can call metallic and another texture 2D for the metallic map which in my case it's going to be this texture we can drag both down here, multiply them together and connect the outcome to the metallic input right, so this is our basic PBR setup if you want, you can add another vector one for the smoothness, for example. Mine is going to be a default value of 0 0.5. Right, so this is the basic PBR setup. Now for the mesh effect, we can start, for example, with a gradient texture, this gradient noise. And for example, as soon as we add this to the main texture, we can connect it to the emission. And this is what we get at this point. Some bright spots in our weapon. But we want to have some control over the amount, so let's create a power node. And as you can see, this will give us that control. But we don't want this pink spot, so let's clamp this gradient noise between 0 and 1. And that's it, they are gone. Now we are going to need a few more properties like a vector 1 for the gradient noise scale. Mine is going to be a default of 15. And then a vector 1 for the gradient noise power with a default value of around 5. Ok, we are starting to have something. Now we need a few more properties like another color for the gradient noise color which is also going to be in HDR mode and this is going to be multiplied after the power just like this I'm gonna choose a pink color something violet pink ok, but we want this effect to scroll to move, to have motion so let's add a time node which is going to be multiplied by a vector 2 called gradient noise speed And this is going to be added to a UV node. 
and then connect it to the UV input of the gradient noise and that's it, we have a scrolling mesh effect. Right, but as you can see we are applying our effect to the wall mesh to our wall wiper. What if we want it only in the metal part of our sword? Well, for that we could, for example, use this metallic map, erase everything where we don't want the effect to be applied, end up only with this part, and then we can add a texture 2D which is going to be our mask. I'm going to assign the mask texture where I want to apply our mesh effect. I'm going to sample this texture and then we can multiply this after the power node. Just like this and replace this connection. And as you can see now, we have only the effect applied only in the metal part. That's great, that looks better. So this is the basic setup for a mesh effect. You can improve this by adding distortion, by adding a Fresnel for example. If you want to learn more about Geograph, you can go to my channel and there are plenty of tutorials where you will learn certainly something new. Once this is done, I'm going to create an empty that is going to hold my sword and then we can create a material out of the shader we just made. I'm going to apply it to the sword and then also apply the mask and change the color as well as play with the power value of the gradient noise. And I end up with this. So at this point we have a nice looking mesh effect. Now let's improve this by creating some particles with VFX graph. And if you want to follow along, I made this smoke texture available for free in my Patreon page. The link's also in the description. Once you got the smoke texture, we can create a visual effect graph with right click. And then open it up with double click. We can duck it around here. Now let's already start by adding the smoke texture down here. But as you can see, it's not animated and we can see the wall flip book. The cool thing is that we only need to say that the UV mode should be in flip book blend. And in flip book size, let's say it's 6 by 6, which is the amount of frames there is in X and in Y. Let's increase the size with the set size module, which is going to be random uniform. More or less around this size, but as you can see, it is still not animated. Well, to fix that, we need a text index over lifetime. And the last key of the point is going to correspond to the amount of frames, which is 36, but let's set it to 35 since we start counting from the zero. Now let's add a color property for the smoke color. You can set it to expose it if you want to control it in the inspector, by the way. I'm going to pick a dark red for this one. And then let's add a set color down here. And as soon as we connect this, nothing happens. And that's because this set color of a lifetime should be set to multiply in the composition instead of overwriting. And here we go, we have the color working well. Let's just push these keys closer to the center so it has a better fade in the beginning and in the end. And we don't want this to move, so let's remove the set velocity. And the smoke stays down here, as you can see. So let's add a position box. So it fits inside a box shape. But we want this box to match the sword size. More or less with this size, thin but tall. Push it a little bit up as well in the Y. Looking good, now it matches the size of the metal part. Nice. Finally, let's increase the capacity. Set the rate to 20, seems okay. And let's also add a random rotation 
with the set angle module random in the Z axis only. Now the cool thing with this built-in shader is that you can turn on soft particles so the smoke doesn't get abruptly cut by the mesh. This way it fades whenever it gets closer to a vertex. Small values add a smaller fade. Now for the particles with trails, we can actually copy and paste this with Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And let's reset the UV mode to default, as well as assign the default particle texture that comes with Unity. And then change the blend mode to additive. And we don't want to use smoke color, so let's create a new color for the particles. I'm gonna pick something bluish this time, it adds a nice touch. And this is way too big, so let's decrease the size to something 10 times smaller. Ok, cool. Now, to add a spiral motion to this, we need to set a new position to the particles, with this. And then there's this cool rotate 3D model, that will help us in a moment, but before that, as you can see, the particles lost their previous position. So if we get the position before the update particle, and fit this like this, as you can see they go back to where they were. So basically now we can fit that information to the rotate 3D position. And since the Y of the rotation axis is already set to 1, if we increase the angle, this will immediately start spinning. And let's fit it a random angle, between 0 0.01 and 0 0.1. Maybe less in the maximum. Something like this looks cool. Now let's actually change the box size, so it's a tiny box down here in the bottom. And then let's decrease the max lifetime to more or less 1.5. This is leaving a little bit too much. And we set this box down here so we can use a set velocity so the particles go up. Basically the X and Z are equal in A and B, but in Y we want to increase the positive values, something like this, so it goes up until it reaches only the tip of the sword. More or less like this seems ok. Now for the trails, we are first going to need a trigger event rate in the update particle, and you can set its rate to 20. And then we can search for a simple adds and trails. And if you don't find anything, make sure that in preference, in visual effects, you got the experimental operators slash blocks turned on. And now we can erase this site, since we already have it. And then we can connect the trigger event rate to the GPU event, just like this. Now, the strip capacity doesn't need to be that much but we want to increase the particle per strip count to 1000, so it becomes smoother. And the cool thing is that we can inherit values from the particles, like for example the size and the lifetime as well. For the lifetime, if we multiply it with 0 0.2, we get a shorter trail as you can see. This will control the length of the trail. Down here we don't need any turbulence, unless you want to create electricity, you can play with that. In my case I'm going to remove it, I want this trail to be smooth. And for this one, we can actually remove the texture. And we also don't want this size of a lifetime to be in overwrite mode, we want it to multiply the size that comes from the particles. And then you can control the thickness of the trail through this curve. Cool, looking good. Now we just want to add some color to this and that's it. So let's use a color of a lifetime. And we want to add a gradient property, this time, up here. I already have this gradient made up, but it's very simple. I'm actually gonna make it orange in the beginning. 
and maybe a little bit purple towards the end, why not, it adds a nice touch. And if you want you can play with the amount of rotation, it will look nicer with a little bit more rotation. Oh, and by the way, the number of the rate is not very much noticeable, this will probably change, but don't forget to set it to at least 20, so the trails become smoother. And that's it, that's pretty much done, you can play with the lifetime now, the trails will live longer, it adds a different feeling, and there's still so much you can do with these two tools, you have the shader, you can improve it, you have the particles, you can add different motions and different effects, it's really amazing. And let me know if you want to see more cool tricks with VFX Graph and Shader Graph as well. So that's it guys, if you want to study this up close and get all of these effects, all of this is available on my Patreon page as usual and you will find plenty of effects there that you can use in your game. And a big thank you goes to all my patrons, the channel survives thanks to you guys and a special shout out goes to Super Mega Patrons, which are Adriano Bottega, Alejandro, Connor Marble, ForteHeroGames.com, Goblin Plague, Imarias PC, Invention Games, Josh McCormick, Juan Mendiola, Ken Lee, Makosi, Marco Rossi, Psychotech Studios, Steven Melton, TK, and Garek Yigezarian. Thank you for your support, you guys are amazing, you guys rock! And I hope you have all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.